Are we ready? We're ready. Okay. Hi, thank you for coming today. We're here to present you with a streamlined plan for effective student parent communications with the Sonoran Science Academy. We aim to provide you with information that will enable you to decide which communication method or methods to implement in order to better meet the needs and preferences of your key stakeholders. My name is Kristen Lane, and on the behalf of my entire team, I thank you for your time and your attention. There will be time for questions at the end of our presentation. However, feel free to ask questions of myself or any of my colleagues at any time. Now it's time to meet the team. To my immediate left, we have Cody, Kyle, Ariel, Taylor, and Tyler. To give you an overview of the project and the presentation in general, we'll first discuss the project scope. This will give you an idea of the problem at hand between parent and student communication at the Sonoran Science Academy. We'll also describe here how we plan to fix that problem. Later, we will discuss the key stakeholders and each of their stakes involved in this project. After that, we'll describe the situation. This will analyze the context of, this, of the school and the problem at hand between parent and student communication. That leads to outcomes and impacts in which we will describe how, or what we will accomplish, how we will accomplish it, and what impacts that will leave on the school and all key stakeholders involved. Lastly, there will be a timeline of deliverables, which will give you an idea of when we'll accomplish each of our tasks and assure you that we will accomplish this project on time. All right, well, um, with such a high turnover rate of military families at the Sonoran Science Academy, the main problem facing the school is developing a communication strategy that best suits uh, today's students and parents, but also future students and parents. So our first opportunity as a group is to do a survey with the parents. And from this, we can learn uh, what communication methods they prefer and, and how we can connect with them in their busy lifestyles. Next, our next opportunity is with these students. And to connect with them, we're planning a survey also and also doing a focus group. Between this focus group and the survey, we're hoping to connect with these guys on a more personal basis since we're students ourselves. And from this, we can pitch to the school which communication strategies these students prefer, and uh, how they can connect with this younger generation of the crowd. Lastly, our third opportunity is with the Sonoran Science Academy themselves. Uh, from this opportunity, we can put together all of our research that we conducted, and we can develop a long-term communication strategy for success for this school. Our hope for this entire presentation and for our entire project is to let the school know that they can take the pressure off the admin staff and they can focus on other important issues within the school. There are some key stakeholders the Sonoran Science Academy, oh, our team needs to consider before recommending a suitable communication plan to the Sonoran Science Academy. For instance, the school itself, the school is concerned with maintaining brand prestige and integrity without, with the parents and students while working within an extremely limited budget. The faculty, however, is concerned with getting information to the parents and students to ensure that the students get an effective education and are not necessarily concerned with the budget of the school. Parents seem to be most concerned with maintaining a balance between communication and time. They want the necessary information without spending an exorbitant amount of time getting it. Students are currently showing a lack of interest in communication on the part of the school, but end up missing key information they need to be successful, so we're hoping to rectify that with our research. And the Air Force is also concerned with maintaining their brand and image, but they need the Sonoran Science Academy to comply with base rules and regulations in order to do that. As you can see, all the stakeholders have a stake in communication, but ultimately desire a different outcome, which our team needs to consider and balance with a compromise in order to be successful in this project. Okay, I'd like to take some time to analyze the situation at hand. The first and foremost uh, aspect of the Sonoran Science Academy is its location on an Air Force Base. Um, first off, this is the very first charter high school that was founded on an Air Force Base, which means the school has no real model to follow in terms of how to conduct their parent student communications. Um, secondly, they have to follow Air Force rules and regulations, not only with their budget, but also with how they conduct um, their parent student communications. For example, their school is not allowed to give an open house because the Air Force will not allow that. And lastly, because they're a new school, this is their first graduating class, they are inexperienced, they do not have their own model with 
how to conduct parent-student communications. Secondly, the school has a high turnover rate, also as a part of being on an Air Force base, because most of their students are the children of active Air Force members. And this means they get new students and parents almost on a weekly basis. And every year they have a 50% turnover rate, which means whatever model they use to conduct communications now might not necessarily be the same model they use in a few months. And lastly, the Sonoran Science Academy wishes to improve their parents' student communications. And in order to do this, they need to determine an effective means of communicating with both the parents and the students based on what they have and in their limited budget. And we can do this using um, information from past surveys as well as information that we will find out ourselves. And this leads to our expected outcomes and impacts. The first expected outcome is we'll create the surveys for the parents and students um, and distribute them and allow the parents and students to fill out these surveys. And from there, we will conduct focus groups in order to determine not what the survey answers are because we have that, but why the parents and students think that. And at the end of our project, it will present the Sonoran Science Academy with a communications model that will not only give them a way to communicate with parents and students now, but will hopefully set the foundation for something that they can build up in the future when they need to change. So for our timeline, we have laid out six deliverables that we will have to do throughout this time period. Our first deliverable is our preliminary research, which we will conduct through online and library research, through information that we've gotten from Principal Peggy, and through information that we will find on other schools that are located on a military base. We have already started this. We started on September 16th, and as you can see by our Gantt chart, it is due in three days. The second, or the next two deliverables are parent and student surveys, which we will conduct by October 15th. These surveys will help us find out the different, or the preferred communication methods of the parents and students in the Sonoran Science Academy. After our parent and student surveys, we will conduct focus groups for both the parents and students. This will further our analysis of the preferred communication methods. We will hold these focus groups by October 29th. After the surveys and focus groups, we will then develop our communication implementation strategy. We will develop the strategy by using our preliminary research and the results from our survey and focus groups. We will finish this by November 15th. And we will do all of this at no cost to the Sonoran Science Academy. The mission of the Sonoran Science Academy is to provide rigorous college prep STEM-focused education through challenging comprehensive curriculum, continuous assessment, and dedicated teachers. By conducting surveys, analyzing those surveys through focus groups, my group is, has the goal to ensure that your mission is heard. The strategies that we provide are expected to improve communication with key stakeholders at the Sonoran Science Academy by generating communication methods proved to be successful through our research. This all comes at no cost to you, and we ensure you that with our help, the Sonoran Science Academy will rise to new heights. We hope that we have provided you with sufficient information regarding our techniques for approaching communication opportunities at the Sonoran Science Academy. Thank you for your time, and if you have any questions, my group and I would be happy to answer them for you now. I do have a question. So I'm wondering what your, um, when you will have your survey completed and when you're planning to do your focus group. Our survey is planning on being completed in three days. So we're working on our survey right now. In the focus group, the timeline is going to be as soon as we finish that survey, then we're going to go ahead and talk to Peggy and see the best time to schedule the focus group. But the date for the focus group to be completed is going to be Okay, so when you say three days, do you mean three days to get it to the client or three days to get it to your instructor and project manager for review? Three days to get it to the instructor and project manager for review. Okay, and then um, just keep make sure that you're pushing ahead with that focus group because I know people's time fills up quickly. Um, what kind of information are you, do you have questions already made, I think, on for your surveys? Some of those questions. Yeah, we do have some. We have actually quite a few questions for both parents and students. We 
they're very similar to each other, but we've kind of altered them to um, support each different group. Mm -hmm. We have it in our research plan that we sent to 10 groups. And how many surveys are you sending out? How many are you able to take that? I believe we're sending out surveys to all the parents in email, and they're going to send out surveys to students in class. Um, we are hopeful, differently discussed how much we're hoping to get that. We've, we've kind of tossed around the idea of um, doing an incentive because the principal had mentioned um, an incentive is one good way to get the students to incorporate their parents mm -hmm. so they get the survey back to us. Mm -hmm. um, so we've talked about doing a pizza party um, or maybe like something like candy or something like that just to help the kids uh, to encourage them to, to commit the service. So that's your kind of contingency plan if you don't get very many of them out the incentives. Exactly. Yeah. All right, that's all the questions we have. Okay, well, thank you so much for attending our presentation today. We hope that we were extremely helpful with um, your decision to implement a communication plan for your school. Okay, great. Um, all right, so we're just going to give you some feedback that's going to help you with your written project plan that's due next week, as well as future presentations. Do you want to go first? Okay. All right. So um, good work uh, with the, your bottom line on top. You did a nice job with that. So we knew what value you were bringing to us. You also did nice team introduction and good forecasting for your presentation. Um, my main concern with your presentation is your visual design strategies are extremely uh, distracting. And uh, when you've got moving things going on, people are focusing in on that instead of you. So remember, you're the highlight of the presentation. The slides are just there to support you. And when you have things moving around in and out, then it, it, it's distracting. So you need more contrast and color on your slides. You're using a blue background, and um, it's dark in some places, and it's light writing. Check your slides for accuracy, because there's a lot of words outside of text boxes. Uh, use more pictures, eliminate clip art, too many words on the slides, eliminate slides transition and the moving pieces. So that to me, um, your visual design aspect was the biggest change you can make moving forward. You covered some really good information during the, the, the information in the middle of your presentation. Um, some of it was a little bit uh, repetitory, so make sure that you're being as clear, concise, and precise as possible. Uh, you moved into Q&A at 9 minutes and 30 seconds, so you had some, some, some good time management that typically at 9 minutes and 30 seconds you would just say, well, we don't have time for questions because you're in charge of managing the room and just let the audience know that you'll get back to them if they have questions. And you did a little wrap up after Q&A, but it's most important to hit home on your bottom line one more time. You did your bottom line at the beginning, right before Q&A, make sure you hit on it right after. I know I said a lot, and maybe you have anything to add? Um, you hit most of it. Um, posture, when you guys are talking, a lot of you have closed posture, hands in pockets. Both of you have your hands in your pockets right now. So whenever you're up there, you're like on stage, hands by your side. When you're talking, use your hands, try not to cross in front or in back. Um, speed was good. You guys weren't talking too fast. I didn't understand everything you were saying. So just work on the professionalism of your slides. Yeah, the slides are the, are the biggest thing that you can work with. So the great news is content-wise, moving forward to your written project plan, you have everything in place. You can just shift it into writing, got a good bottom line on top. Um, did everyone get my survey that I sent by Qualtrics? That's the only thing to do for Thursday is evaluating your team member. So there's nothing else to do. Save this video because you'll need that for follow-on, and we'll talk about everything that's due next week on Thursday. But you guys did a good job overall. Any questions for us to help you be successful on your project or future presentations? Um, I have a question. Yes. I wasn't sure if this was professional or not. I we did the project on my Mac, and of mm -hmm. course there's a little bit of formatting that goes on um, when you switch it to Windows. Do you suggest maybe in the future if we have this problem again, is it okay to quickly edit or just you know pull the text box a little bit bigger and do what I have to do, or do we need to just leave it? So yeah, it's always a good idea to get um, early. In, in this case, um, it would be presenting here for your for your next presentation. So even knowing that is that just yeah, come and make sure that you, you do the changes. It's also good to actually have two versions, one that you've built, if, if, if possible, one that you've built on a Mac and one that you've built on a PC. Um, that kind of stuff happens all the time in the real world, and we, we just want to be as professional as possible. And when you save it, you can save it, you know how there's 
like you can save it as dot pptx 